Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. I'm here with my good friend Adam Lynch with Defenders USA. And uh, he came out and shot the inner game of shooting this weekend. And I, of course I'm honored when a, uh, an instructor comes to class and runs his own program. And it's a great chance for us to think about uh, why instructors train, you know. Uh, I, I didn't make him a better shooter. That's not what we we're talking about. But why do we continue to train? And why is it necessary for instructors? So I find for me that occasionally, not occasionally, but oftentimes because we teach so much that we get stuck in the rut of what we teach all the time. Yeah. And then oftentimes that can become stale. And I know for me it had become a little bit stale and it was time for a regeneration, for a re-motivation. Um, I certainly got that this weekend. Um, and, and really to see fresh ideas, new ideas. One, I've got to pass on to others because really we're in the business of trying to save people. Right? Not right now, but in the future. And to be able to do that, if we stay stagnant, we may not be able to save them in the future, right? So we've got to constantly evolve and change and grow ourselves so that we can take and impart that into others so that they can they can see more, know more, do more, right? And then hopefully when that day comes, if it ever does, and we pray it never does, that they are better able to modify to fit the situation that probably is not going to fit the exact modality of what we're training, but if they're malleable enough, because we were malleable enough, and we grow that in our students, they can modify the situation that's there. So really I see it as, it's our growth for others' growth, and to, to not stay stagnant. And really, honestly, to re-motivate. And boy, I'd say this weekend was a re-motivation. Good. You know, I know you have an extensive background, your military background, law enforcement, and you're a trainer, and it's interesting to hear you say, hey, we need to re-motivate, we need to change, we need to broaden. What's something in the industry you're passionate about that you think that we ought to grow or change or watch our direction on? I would tell you growing the mental and emotional ability to deal with Pain, shock, surprise, unexpected, and then the things that don't happen the way our movie mind thinks it might, <laughs> right? And and it never happens the way you envision it. And if you're realistic with your students, you can start getting them to, to, to envision more real, realism of what could happen to them. And they'll, they'll never fit the way they imagine it, right? They can, they can adapt to it, they can modify to it. I think, one of the biggest things we can do in the industry is help build the emotional fortitude. Mm -hmm. The, 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 and I even tell you the psychological, so, social, and even for those who believe this, your religious fortitude, right? Because mm -hmm. um, any animal is going to fight to survive in the moment of the fight, okay? At least those who don't cower because they've trained themselves to go ahead and fight. That's the people we see. Mm -hmm. They're probably almost 80, 90% are going to fight. But we want you to fight efficiently, but we also want you to survive the fight after the fight. And I think that is something where I saw in my background that our warrior types would fight the fight. But it's the fight afterwards that they would drown their sorrows in a bottle, mm -hmm. beat the husband or wife one time too many in a bottle, in a needle, um, or in addictions of too many video games, too much isolation, and other things. So to balance out the emotional component for the aftermath is something I think we need to build into the training we do more of. So to me, that's, I wouldn't say the missing component, but not done enough. Yeah. And I was so appreciative in your courses that you're doing the same same thing. You're, you're building in the emotional component for later, the mental component for later, for the internal fortitude to survive the aftermath. They'll fight. If they're coming to you, they're already gonna fight, yeah. right? Making them more efficient is your way surviving the aftermath, more instructors need to do that, and you did that in space this weekend. You know, it's interesting that um, we often <clears throat> think it's gonna be a gunfight. There's many fights in the world, oh, yeah. you know, uh, especially for risk takers, which the warrior culture tends to be, and it can be a physical risk, it can be emotional risk, it can mm -hmm. be negative risk. These all come towards us, and unfortunately now in the world we're having uh, young men kill themselves at a rate we've never seen before. And it's something that's near and dear to my heart because we're all in a battle and we've got to find a way to do it. And I think taking care of people for the aftermath is essential. And oftentimes when they come to us, they're in the aftermath. You know? And something I noticed with you, you 
had a conversation at dinner and you're passionate about this, you know, and it means something to you. And I'm interested, how did you get to the point where this will really matter to you? You know, this is a hard question. I know what I'm asking. Well, I lived through it. Yes. More importantly, I've lost friends through it. You know, they didn't have the mental maturity, mm -hmm. and that needed to be built, right? My very best one. Yeah. So, and others. Yeah. So, if, you know, and, and you know how it is with, with us, probably a percentage, I'd say 10, 15, I'd say really close to 30, 40% of the people I see are previous victims of crime. Yeah. Who had the, the cojones to step up and get back on that horse. It usually took years. Yeah. Right? Many years and terror to be able to do that. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to bet you two see through a course of a weekend, you see the rape in the eyes. Right? You see the assault. You see the kidnap. And oftentimes I'll read the murder in the eyes of the people that came. Uh, the murder they experienced in somebody very close to them. And you read it, and oftentimes they hold that close and they hide it. And yet they took years to come back to that training, or to come to that training, mm -hmm. where if we can somehow reach them here ahead of time, they'll get back into that training sooner or more often, and they'll become less likely to become a victim of crime. Right? In the law enforcement world, you were there too. In the law enforcement world, once you become victimized, you oftentimes become victimized again. Yes. Why? Because you didn't prepare to not become a victim in the first place, and then you allowed it, or the disbelief of the normalcy bias to allow you to become so again. So if we can get them to have the mental maturity that, hey, okay, I was victimized, this bad thing happened, I'm getting back on the horse sooner, or something to that effect, we can affect them more, they less become a victim of crime, and better yet, if we can catch them before they become the victim of crime, they probably will never be in the presence of the crime in the first place. You know, I, I want to appreciate you for being vulnerable enough to say that. Oftentimes, people look at us and they think, hey man, you know, you, you, you don't feel, but it's quite the opposite, isn't it? And it's there. And I often find that teaching is an act of service and love above everything else. And I appreciate you for being real about it. It's tough, you know. But if we're really going to influence people, you know, you guys gave me a chance on your podcast to tell my story. And it, I tell everybody, it's the biggest growth point and the hardest thing I've ever done. And it's a good story. You should yeah. go listen to it. It's yeah. a Brian Hill story. Yeah. Go look at it on our YouTube channel. You should, Or find it on theirs, because I think you have a link yep. to it. Find it. You should listen to that. Um, I think it'll be a good growth thing for anybody who's, who, yep. who, who can listen to it. More importantly, those who have the possibility of becoming a victim, and that's really all of us, yes. or those who've been the previous victims of anything. I don't care if it's yeah. a true crime or just abuse, physical or mental, in their growing up years. You know, I, I, I respect him immensely because I see the heart in what he does and the truth in his actions, his words and his deeds match it, and it provides a good example. We're always providing examples for other people of overcoming adversity, facing our challenges, and that's what being a warrior really is at heart. It's not anger, it's not rhetoric, it's being present. And it's taking care of the people around you and doing a good job. I appreciate you, brother. May I add something yeah. to what you, you've said? Not add to, but to, you, you, you triggered a thought. You good. mentioned love, right? And one of your first questions is why do instructors go off to training? Yeah. Honestly, if the basis of your training is not love, you're in the wrong place, yeah. right? I know that sounds odd, for really, when you look at the gun community, oftentimes it's all dark and big kit and yeah. rifles and raw all the time. And, and I get it. There's a fun component to it. And there's a joyousness in the victory or in the moment of combat for those who are trained. But at the same time, when you're trying to influence others to not be victims or to get past the victimhood of the moment, honestly, if the basis of that is not love, and that seems flowery, it seems... I don't know, gentle, whatever you want to call it. If it's not that, then you're in the wrong business in the first place. And if you truly love your students or those who you are going to train, and really even if you're not a trainer, those who you may have to protect, yeah. right? Or maybe love your family enough to train yourself to be a better version of what you do as a defensive person. If you don't have that basis of love, you're probably not going to pursue it. 
It's my motivator to stay in my dry fire and, and go into training with others. It's really the basis of love. And I'd, I'd encourage you, you brought it up so well, that instructors, it should be your basis. Love is your basis. That's the beginning of everything. If you do that, you have a better motivation to stay within the training environment, continue your training, because if you don't, you're letting others down. And really you're showing your love is not outward, it's maybe more inward or towards your self, self ingratiation, if that's a word. Yeah. Um, and and, and it, because others are important, you have to make your training um, uh, important to you so you can pass on correctly to them. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon as we age as warriors, we often become light givers, yeah. you know, instead of the violence that was inherent in us. And we notice that we need to protect and grow. And that's a really important, and I see it quite frankly, and it's a real mark of manhood to make that transition to be able to not only be vulnerable to it, but to be present for the people and say, hey, listen, this is important and I love it. And I appreciate what you're doing, man. Well, you too. You, you do an incredible course. Uh, we just finished the inner game of shooting. And I'll tell you, that is probably the most important component of training more so than the technical you even brought that up yeah. you know any monkey can learn to shoot it's dealing with this and man you did such a great job i hope more folks will come to it so it's the last place we look up. isn't it yeah yeah you'll do everything else and then you when you can't fix it you'll come to that portion of it <laughs> well i appreciate your time man Sir. thank you as always Phenomenal. where can people find you uh defenders usa if you look online yeah. it's defenders dash usa so there's a hyphen in there we have two different youtube channels defenders usa it has a shield on there um, or we have another one called Defenders Live, which is where you'll find his story. Um, and uh, we'd love to have you there. Good stuff. And as always, guys, measure, refine, and perform. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combat, Adam Lynch with Defenders USA, and that's all for now. Thank you, brother. That was good, man. That was real. <laughs>